Well, here we go. Uh, this is the practice test for geometry chapter one, and let's get started with uh, problem number one. So I see a pattern in here. It says, based upon this patterns, what are the next two terms of the sequence? Well, all the numerators are five, and you have to look carefully at all the denominators. Well, the first denominator is not quite there. It's actually a one. And so when I write all the denominators out, 1, 3, 9, 27, 81, I start to see a pattern. What's the pattern? Well, you have to be comfortable with your 3s as a base raised to an exponent. 3 to the 0 power is 1. 3 to the 1st power is 3. 3 to the 2nd power is 9. 3 to the 3rd power is 27. 3 to the 4th power is 81. So if you use your calculator, what it is going to turn out here is it's going to be B. Because 3 to the 5th power is 243, and 3 to the 6th power is 729. Okay, and the next one, again, we're looking for patterns. It says, based upon the pattern, what is the next figure in the sequence? Well, I see 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then the pattern repeats all over again. Now, this is very difficult to teach. This is an awareness skill. You have to just see it. You have to study it long enough to kind of see the pattern. And then there are six shapes repeated over and over again. So what is going to be the next shape? Well, it's going to be that square, which is the first one in the pattern. Let's look at number three. Three, again, we're trying to discover a pattern here for these even numbers. It says, based upon the pattern, make a conjecture about the sum of the first 20 positive even integers. Well, we have 2, which is one even integer. Then we have 2 and a 4, which is two numbers. Then we have 2, 4, 6 is 3, 4 numbers, 5 numbers. And look over here at this column. So if we have one number, such as 2, we get a 1 here. If we have two numbers, we get a 2. If we have five numbers, we get a 5. And to figure out the sum, it looks like you just take the number of numbers and you just times it by the next one in the list. So if I want 20, it's going to be 20 times 21, which is A right there. Okay, let's look at number 4. 4, again, we have more and more patterns and geometry and, and numbers, and you just got to see them and study them and see what's going on. All right, so let's see. We have 13 times 88. There's two 8s. Look at this. 13 times triple eight, and we get that number. 13 times four eights, and we get that number. 13 times five eights, and we get that number. So what I'm seeing here is we keep on adding one more eight to the pattern, and, and we keep on adding one more five uh, within this number in here. So notice if there's five eights, there's three fives. If there's four eights, there's two fives. If there's three eights, there's one five. So if I had a number over here, which has seven eights, it looks like there's going to be five fives. And so it looks like A has five fives and D has five fives. And which one is correct? Well, if you keep on looking at the pattern over here, we have two ones next to each other and we have two fours next to each other no matter how many eights were included in in the number the ones and the fours remain exactly the same therefore a has to be the right answer because that has two ones and two fours let's look at number five it says make a conjecture to show that the conjecture is false okay we're trying to come up with an example that's a counter example to prove something's false so the conjecture is someone's telling us any number divisible by 4 is also divisible by 8. Well, let's look at this one. Well, 24, which is divisible by 4, check, it's also divisible by 8. Uh, let's look at this one. Uh, 40. Well, 40 is divisible by 4, and it's also divisible by 8. That doesn't seem like a, a counterexample. But this one here, it's divisible by 4, but it's not divisible by 8. And so uh, let's take a look at the last one here to make sure that one's not it. Well, this one's not even divisible by 4, so it doesn't even qualify. So it has to be C.